Welcome everybody, my name is Shreya Athlet and this is the Teaching and Learning Academy. I'm a teacher working in London and I've been in the profession for around 13 years. I've, hold, I've held many positions such as a lecturer, teacher, um, an advanced practitioner, learning manager and currently I monitor quality. Um, today's video is all about how to be more creative in the classroom. It's something that many of us struggle at the best of times. It doesn't matter how experienced you are, uh, especially in the teaching profession, you can hit this wall, uh, which often authors call like a writer's block. And um, that's it, you're not getting any further. You could be sitting in front of a lesson plan, type a sentence, then delete it, then type a sentence, then delete it, or come up with a whole activity and then think, no, nope, that's definitely not gonna work, and then delete that. And today's video is all about um, some research that I stumbled upon um, when I was planning for an Ofsted inspection. I wanted to um, go all out, which is the ambition of you know all teachers, you know, get the best review, get the best observation, get the best feedback, um, et cetera, et cetera, and I'm quite competitive. I started doing some research on this and I came across some research carried out by a psychologist called JP Guilford. And um, his research was all about divergent thinking. Um, it was very, very interesting because all through our lives, through education, schooling, work, we, are, we receive loads of training and um, what he regards as being convergent thinking but we're never taught divergent thinking, which is all about problem solving, being more creative. And his research was really, really enlightening. And what I'd like to do today is I'd like to share five tips that I found to be really, really useful when trying to be more creative um, in the capacity of a teacher, basically in preparing lessons. But you could apply these to any of your professions that um, require a high level of creativity. One of the activities that I found to be very, very useful when uh, reading this research is picking one object. Uh, you could try this on yourself, you could try it in the classroom, and I guarantee you it's great fun. It's just so creative and it's so simple. I mean, prep time is zero or zero. Um, and um, the fruits of your labor are absolutely brilliant. And those who teach practical subjects here, motor mechanics, engineering, et cetera, et cetera, where you've got to have a really hands-on approach. This activity I found to be really, really useful. I mean, you could give learners or students a paper clip and tell them, I want you to create five different uses for this. Um, you know, and that's it, away they go. I mean, a paper clip's a paper clip, but what more can you do with it? And that becomes a challenge, that's the stretch. Um, and it's great to see the learners actually, the, the teamwork that you see and the flow of creativity, the ideas, some are really wacky. And another, an, another object you could give them is a, a, a power cord, basically just belonging to a PC or a laptop and just say, right, Give me five different uses for this. What could you do with this? I mean, something as small as a SIM card opener, which you get on these modern day mobile phones, uh, you know, we, helps you pop your SIM tray out. And um, telling them, you know, give me five different uses for this. Where would you use it? The level of creativity that comes up is just so immense. And it's so, so great to see in the classroom. It's really, really good. And it's such a simple activity. I mean, prep time is absolutely zero. You can pick anything from the arena that you're teaching, basically, and then say to them, right, give me five uses. Um, if you're a fashion teacher, you could give them a really bizarre material, basically, to work with. You could give them a piece of wood and say, right, I want you to come up with five uses for this in the fashion industry. You know, where would you use this? How would you use this other than what is the obvious? You should take a portion of the day, be 10, 15 minutes, and then sit there and work out 10 new solutions to the problem that you might be having. JP Guilford talks about being reflective and headlining your day. Now, what he means by headlining your day is he states in the research that on your way home, um, your commute or whatever you're doing, you should have a portion of the day where you sit there and you reflect upon the day the good points, the bad points, what you would have done differently, etc., etc., And then you should come up with a headline. 
that headline is helping you practice to be more creative. Another strategy that JP Guilford talks about in his research is uh, he titles it uh, articles on trial and he states that if you're anything like me uh, I'm not a massive book reader um, I read more articles than anything else um, and what he talks about is what you should do after reading an article for example is put that article on trial and then think about whether you agree with the conclusion or not challenge it and how would you challenge it um, and this helps you become more creative. The final strategy that JP Guilford talks about um, in his research is alternative to negative thoughts. Now, this is something that's practiced by therapists. I really related to this um, because the scenario was just so applicable to me. Um, and he talks about, imagine your boss has called you in unexpectedly what do you think? And if you're anything like me, um, it's always the negative. I mean, you're always thinking, oh, what have I done? Did I upset a learner? Has somebody complained about me? Uh, did I say something wrong in the office and it's upset somebody? All of those thoughts automatically just, they, they swallow me up. And um, people who suffer from mental illnesses are often taught this strategy that JP Guilford um, says about divergent, how to be more divergent in your thinking. And what he states in his research is that the second that you get these negative thoughts in your mind, um, what you should do is come up with, identify it and then come up with an alternative thought. So for example, um, if somebody cuts you up while driving on the motorway or the dual carriageway, um, uh, if you're watching in America, the highway, um, and if somebody cuts in front of you, then, you know, you might swear, you know, that first thought, that initial thought, but taking that thought out and then thinking, you know what, at least he, he or she, um, you know, we didn't end up in a collision or there wasn't a car accident. And it's, it's identifying the thought and then replacing the thought with something far more positive. And this is what divergent thinking is all about. What JP Guilford states is, at certain points in the day, what you should do ideally is sit down and just try and catch any negative thoughts that you've had and then write down alternatives to them. And what you're doing is you're conditioning your mind. It's not easy. Even though I came across this research quite some time ago, um, I still try to practice it. But when um, those unexpected meetings come along, with your boss or your line manager and you weren't expecting it, I still can't help but think, what did I do wrong? I still struggle with uh, this final one. Uh, this one doesn't come easy. Um, replacing those negative thoughts with alternatives is something still I do practice and need to practice even more. Um, because I guess it's years of conditioning of thinking like that. Um, it doesn't go away in a few months. Um, it takes a significant amount of time. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notifications for weekly content ahead. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.